There's going to be many events at the wedding supper. Mm. Last service, I said, don't ask me so much about them, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You try and make it so that all our guesses will solve. Yes, sir. We'll solve it together. All of us will see just the same. But there's an aspect. The Spirit of the Lord, I believe, wanted me to say, because it's connected still with our work here. When the prophet went, saw another dream, he called this a dream or a vision, and the location could only fit in all aspects to the wedding supper. Brother Brown talked about reward giving day. And its location is probably right around the wedding supper. And uh, he said when he was called to come to his own reward, he said when any man is called, the rest will be clapping. He said, God bless you, brother. Come on. Like how many has attended Price Giving Day? Yeah. How many has been given an award? Amen. Ah, raise your hand properly. A greater award awaits you with the children. Amen. Raise your hand, wave to Jesus Christ. He said, David, how did you feel? Uh-huh, uh-huh, great, great, great. How did you people feel that day? When you were called among all the numbers, even though you want to be humble, your head will swell a little. That's right. Uh, That's right. Uh, That's right. Going to your reward. That's right. And, uh, you know, some, they will be given, as they are calling, the best prize for physics. Before it sits down, the best prize for math. The best prize... Before I sit and he has collected it, all the rest will say, is it only you? Uh -huh. Church. Maybe this is why God allowed this train to, uh, this plane not to go tonight. Because we must not miss this. On that day, so that you will not say, is it only some people? There is also going to be a reward program. Let me tell you, some things will not affect your eternity. But it will put some costs on you in life. I'm going to expand this. If this is where we stop tonight, it's fine. We are still moving into the millennium and the thereafter. But get this very well. Some things will not affect your eternity. The eternity of a child of God is not in jeopardy. But do you know Apostle Paul spoke of a future judgment of you and I? <laughs> you are not going to come into white throne judgment to be judged for sin. Mm. The judgment of your sin has been met here. Right. The Lord has taken care of it. Right. As a matter of fact, you are going to sit with him on the white throne judgment That's right. to judge the others. Right. We, are, we are coming to that. Amen? Amen. But there is a future element the Apostle Paul taught of the judgment of the bride. Mm. It is not the judgment of your person, but the judgment of your work. It's in the Bible. And the prophet told us to be conscious of that. He said every work will be tried. Those works will not necessarily send you to hell. That's not what we're talking about. But it could shortchange you. Mm. You know, the prophet in another place, I will speak on the two sides. The prophet in another place, he said, he was showing us what our sonship should be. He said, many will not be able to live to the realization of their full sonship potential. Mm. But they will be in eternity. They will make it. So we must be careful. What we are doing in the body and how we are relating right. in the body. Amen. If you are relating like an isolator, oh, may God make this night your deliverance. Amen. Because what the devil is making you to do unconsciously is to withdraw from everything that can lay treasures for you mm. and prizes for you in glory. Mm. I tell the saints back at home, if you, if you are not comfortable in this environment, because God wants the best. Yes. Okay. And you must give your all. Yes. It is both for your good in time and in eternity. Yes. 
Find an atmosphere, an environment where you'll be comfortable so you can function. Because whatever you do is going to be brought to reckoning. Now, let's go it like this. Apostle Paul said, I am the master builder. I have laid the foundations. Let every man, let everyone that is building, watch what they are building. He said on this, some are building, watch, which some are building gold. Some are building silver. Some are building brass. Some are building wood. Some are building A. Some are building stubble. And he said, the judgment, the assessment, the trial of each of these buildings is by fire. Oh, my. Some people's work will not endure fire. It cannot stand fire. So on the price given day, you got nothing to show. You are just going to be an onlooker, clapping for others. Those moments will come. You know, it is not everybody who graduated to another class that wins, that, that wins prize or gets distinction. Eh? Some will even be as low as let my people go. But you see, psychologically, it places everybody in their levels. <laughs> he said, every man's work will be what? Will be tried. Whatever you are doing in the body will be what? Will be tried. And we are talking of people who are not sinners, who have escaped the corruption that is in the world through loss, who are identifying with us, who have become part of us in the body. Amen. God has not called us into his body to be a bench woman. No way. Let me tell you, whether you are behind the pulpit or you are behind the pew, it's a call. It's a calling. That is why in whatever positions we have, even to our physical jobs, do you know the prophet said it's a calling? He said that is why we don't do it like others. We do it as Christians. If I'm a teacher, for instance, I must be a Christian teacher. If I'm a farmer, I must be a Christian farmer. If I'm an housewife, I must be a Christian housewife. Whatever is my position is a calling. And the Lord must be glorified in it. I must serve that calling with all diligence. Because there's a reward. And the one we serve is a diligent rewarder. The prophet said, history does not forget. He said, now, not to talk of God. That's right, that's right. Those who spent and are spent mm. for others or for the cause of the kingdom, mm. it's a calling. Amen. It's a work, it's a service. You see, the little, little things we do in the house of the Lord, how some folks will come, we don't pay them for it. Yes. Yes. Amen. <laughs> do you know what Brother Bram said? He said, I don't want wages. <laughs> Do you catch that? He said, I want reward. Wages is commensurate to your service done. But reward is at the great, generous, benevolent discretion. Yes, sir. And it's always much more than what you do. That's right. That's right. That's right. Are you catching it? Amen. This is the zeal that must consume every heart. You see, some people come into the church. To give of their time, come and set up this place. You think God is not looking? If God is such a God of gratitude, appreciation, who will not forget if you give a cup of water in his name? You think he will forget those services? There are those of us whose job is, once we hear a request, it becomes our prayer point. I'm sure there are people like that here. They might not talk, but God is seeing them in their closet. When they say, brother, so, 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 and so, is in this, and so, so, and they carry it as their body. And it is their body. Do you know why? Because they can discern the body of the Lord. If something happened to this finger, has it not happened to the whole body? Who feels the pain? The entire body. That is why you must not be a sabotage to the body. 
Brother Bram said in the message demonology, if, if before the devil, before a sickness or disease could invade the body successfully, he looks for a backsliding cell. That's right. That's right. Brother Bram said we are speaking spiritual language. Is that what a backsliding cell is a cell that has isolated itself? from the rest of the tissue. Ah. As long as the tissue stays together, there is no problem. It said the foreigner will come and you see the white blood cells, the soldiers of the body say, what are you doing here? Yeah. We don't know you here. Your horror is different. It's not complementary to what, get out here. And it said because the cells are together, many a times, they fight and win for your body. That's why sometimes you feel feverish. After a few days, you just say, I felt normal. I thought it was stress. It is the soldiers that God deposited supernaturally fighting for your life. He said, but you get those soldiers weak when you have one of them who is always detaching from the rest. And he said, these enemies are smart. They also don't go for tissues. They look for that isolated one. And they don't go alone. They go like morbid, rabid, wild dogs of the forest. Yes. You see how wolves or uh, what you call this? Ayina. You see how they move? They don't move one. If they, want to, if they see a target, no matter how big, be it a lion, they will go and gather themselves. They said divided before, united with sand. 25 lion, hyenas will surround a lion. What can he do? As it's time to fence off this one, they won't go and chunk, take a chunk, take this one here. By, by all those biting, it yep. will eventually have a penetration. And, you know, the struggle, the guy will relax and they will pray on him. That's, right. That's, That's right. the way demons do in your life. Mm-hmm. That's the way sickness and disease. That's the way they do. They come mass attack. If they come one by one, they can't match you. But they come mass attack and pray on the tissue. And Brother Bram said, since the devil cannot create but can only pervert, he starts his own life by perversion on that cell that is isolated. And you call it cancer. You call it TB. You call it this one. It is the growth of that life. If that is the work that I'm doing, oh man, there's a reward. <laughs> we must be careful. Amen. We must be at soul and body.